Greetings and salutations, my name is Monomark J, and today you can probably figure out what we're doing. We're building a PC. Important note, I have never built a PC in my life, which is why I have this book before me. Bitwit did a video on NZXT's build kit, which comes with this book, and he surmised that this book is so well done that it would be great for anybody building a PC whether they get the build kit from NZXT or buy all their own parts. So we're gonna test that theory because again, I have never built a PC. I've watched plenty of tech videos from so many tech YouTubers, but I don't actually know what I'm doing in terms of never having done it with my own hands myself. So we're gonna crack into this adventurer's map for PC building. And we're going to see how it all shakes out as I build my first ever PC. And you might see some of these parts. I decided to go make myself a beefy boy for future content creation and streaming. And let's just get into the parts list. We have an EVGA for the Win 3 Ultra 3080 Ti. I was thankfully able to get this from Best Buy for retail. Uh, Matthew Swider on Twitter does drops. I also got my PS5 because of his Twitter notifications about when places like Best Buy have stock. For the motherboard, we are going with the ROG Crosshair 8 Dark Hero from Asus, which is going to be paired with the stellar AMD Ryzen 9 5900X. Power supply is going to be a Corsair RMX 1000X along with some handy dandy pro sleeved blue Corsair blue cables. For storage, main storage drive boot drive is going to be this Aberrant Rocket NVMe Gen 4 PCIe 1 terabyte as long as long as long as well. As this Western Digital Black SN750 in the 2 terabyte flavor for games, apps, I'm sure at some point I will expand this the storage in this PC even more down the line because this is going to be a creator PC. So at some point I'll slap in probably a, a classic SSD or two because this motherboard only has two NVMe slots. Sadly, I, I, I really do like this board. It was between this and the MSI Ace Max. I ended up going with the Dark Hero for multiple reasons, none of which make any logical sense to, to tech people because they have sense and reason. And part of my choice might have been a little bit about style. For RAM, I do know because, again, despite being a building novice, I am a YouTube watching master. That Ryzen likes fast memory, so we have this Trident Z Neo. It is a 32 gigabyte kit, two sticks, and for the people that care, let's just get right up there. You can see the timing is 16, 16, 16, 36. 3600 speed, 32 gigs. So I figure this is a good middle ground. Of course, some people are gonna be screaming that you don't need 32 gigs for gaming or even necessarily for streaming, but this video, for example, is being shot in 4K 60 frames a second and got the Ryzen 9. I want some fast, sizable RAM. 64 is probably a little unnecessary for what I'm doing, but I figure 32 is a sweet spot. A handy dandy little toolkit. And then we have the case. Oh, this case. I am already in love with the case, even though it's mostly empty. Let's see. So I took it out of the box, obviously, but I did not completely unwrap it. Well, I did unwrap it, then I rewrapped it. It's, you know, keep dust off of it. But this is the Corsair 5000X RGB. I looked at the box, it says RGB. I feel like they would probably want me to mention that. So it comes with three of the 120 millimeter RGB, the, the Elite fans. And there's going to be six of those total because I almost forgot this over here. Last but not least, for cooling solutions, uh, 360 might be a little unnecessary. I don't know how much overclocking I'm going to attempt, especially in the early days, but um, I like the, I was about to say similarity. That's not the word. Symmetry. You have three fans on the front as the intake. I like the symmetry. So I went with the full three, which are going to go up top and uh, 
the LCD screen, which you get to have a lot of fun with. So that is what is going to be cooling this rig. But what else is there to say? It's time to build my first ever PC. I am terrified. So let's have a look. Table of contents, very nice, very nice. I, I do remember from seeing videos on the build kit, looking at this book. This is a really well put together book. It's very quality, uh, qual it's very quality, it's high quality. Uh, they have a lot of care that they put into this. And like I said, you can buy this just for $30. You don't have to buy the N60 build kit. And we'll see if it does its job, obviously. If things go horribly wrong, blame the book. But we'll see. A new challenge has appeared. You've discovered the ancient ruins of a lost civilization. Inside these ruins, you've unearthed functioning PC parts. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to travel through, collecting these essential parts and assembling them into a working gaming PC. This guide will help you on your quest. We have parts identifiers, progress bar, necessary tools. They also do sell their toolkit. It might be a little overpriced. It's $30. It's the same price as the book, but you only get like five things. And this was, uh, I think, $10 on Newegg for double the tools. Not that I'll need half of them, but just throwing that out there. Got some great art. We have the artifact pieces. Motherboard, gaming card, gaming card, graphics card. You see, I'm a novice. Online walkthrough videos. They always tell you, use the factory manuals, which will, I will also be doing. And then they have the online tech chat and the uh, call center. From what I understand, one of the reasons I didn't go with the pre-builds from NZXT is while their pre-builds are solid, their customer service is not. Sorry, NZXT, but you know, if you Google your own customer service, you'll know what I read. The journey begins. One day I might actually read the flavor text, but I've never been a flavor text kind of person. So installing the memory, RAM sticks and a motherboard. Prepare the motherboard. The SATA cables that come with the board won't be used for this build, except it might be, I don't know, because that might be talking about their specific build. Take out your motherboard and place it gently on the box it came in. The memory channel should be located in the top right corner of the motherboard. Let's see how this goes. Oh. This is from the Kickstarter for the Legends of Vox Machina. It's one of the letter openers. So let's see how it works. I don't often get mail. Did it, did it cut? It's not the sharpest knife. There we go. Good job. Anyway, <laughs> I will set that aside. Let's crack this baby open. I, oh, I like that. You see the, ooh, so it kind of pops up at you. Yep, I've I know what I'm doing. Do I? No. Not really. But I believe you're allowed to hold it there. I kind of wish they put the booklet and the other stuff up front. Oh, wow. That's a that's a whole necessity. I actually kind of like some of the... I like the rainbow. Use the box. So we're going to do just that. I pick up these parts. So if I remember correctly, this is actually for your front I.O. So I think the idea is you plug all your front I.O. into this and then plug this directly in. We've got the Wi-Fi, which I won't be using, and various other cables, and your M.2 screws, stickers, be gone. You want to locate RAM channels two and four which are generally pretty easy because it's going to be these bad boys. Okay, those don't toggle. Very, very lovely. Oh, almost got away from me. We have a sticker that I will never use. You gotta locate the little notch. I've never done this before, but I believe, yes, it goes that way. We're going to seat. Ram. And it seems C 
seated. Alright, we are... Oh, that's the wrong way. Come on. Okay, our ram out is sharp and seated. Step one, two, I don't, I don't know what step this is. But a ram is seated. Consult the manual. Oh, I just skipped all of that. The holes breathe with life. Install, oh God. Okay, processor time processor time this is amd so we're going to open the socket identify the corner mark place the cpu align the do not force or move place gently and put the latch on and we're just gonna nvmes will follow after that okay we're gonna follow in those footsteps so let's bust open this processor which so much box for such a little thing. Although, I feel like Intel is worse. Their boxes are even more over-designed. That, I'm, I've never held a processor in my hands. This is surprisingly weighty. But then again, it does pack a lot of power. Currently, I'm just setting things off to the side. Pull the lever, Gronk. So, okay, that is a, uh, so, I've seen, I've watched so many builds between Linus and Fitwood and Paul's Hardware and, and Jay's Two Cents and all that. I've seen so many builds. Oh boy. Okay. Wow. That, ooh, that, uh, that's a beefy, beefy boy. I will say the triangle is tiny, like so incredibly tiny. I installed the processor. Yay! That was nerve wracking for a second because obviously the Ryzen, the AMDs have the, have the pins on the processor, which I feel is more pressure than Intel. But you know, you have to experience pressure to get the best. No shade on Intel, but let's be let's be honest, Ryzen's just been killing it. It is time for the M.2. So locate the M.2 NVMe slot. I have two NVMe drives near the middle of the motherboard, typically just below the CPU. We'll find a slot. I have two, and they are Philippi flatheads. So right now we're gonna install whoop, the first They yeah, feel like they are. They're not really. Anyway, <laughs> ignore me. Please don't. The first NVMe, which is the Sabrent Rocket NVMe PCIe Gen 4. You know what? That's what you get.
peeled on top of it if your one came with it and screw it in. You may need to skip this step if you have a shield and removed exactly two screws. Well, what if you removed all the screws? What if you had a screw loose? There we go. Just trying to remove that little blue. Because obviously that would be rather bad. Get yourself a nice... Oh, and I can't see... I'm screwing into nothing, I realize. <sighs> I'm terrible at this. Okay, that is partially screwed in. The thermal compound is contacting our SSD to keep it nice and cozy cool as I try and get the other screw in here. Okay, our first SSD is in there, but of course we have Two, which means taking off this shield right here. I'm going to have to hand crank her. So we're actually going to just slip this out, put in this M.2 standoff right here. But I don't have the teeny nut turner i don't i don't know what you call it socket there we go and then this teeny 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 screw one of the reasons i chose this motherboard and to be fair pretty much all high high-end motherboards not that this is the highest but this is definitely not a low end is that it does have these uh, M.2 heat sinks that have thermal compound applied because obviously, you know, even the Gen 3, but especially the Gen 4, they can get pretty darn toasty. But let's see, we've done that. Installing the CPU cooler. Oh god, this is going to be a pain. You've arrived at a crossroads. AIO cooler. AIO cooler. Going through the AIO AMD CPU. So obviously, we need to prepare the motherboard. Important, the M22 AIO cooler came pre-configured for an Intel CPU, da 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 but We also need to open up this big box and see what we're working with before moving forward. Let's get chilled, bruh. I'm pretty sure this is not gonna come set up to function on these standard AMD brackets. Safety and warranty information. Ha <laughs> ha, who needs those? Probably me. Okay, AMD, AM4, Intel, gross. TR4 retention, bag of screws, that's why it's fun. I know I don't have the Intel, so we can get rid of that. And then, oh boy, get a full 360, he said. What's the worst that can happen? Uh, other than I don't know what I'm doing. We do have our three fawnies, a thingy, and another thingy. Cool. So I guess the safety and warranty hopefully has some semblance of instruction. Because otherwise, uh, <laughs> I'm going to the YouTubes for assistance. I noticed they have a QR code, so that probably... That probably tells you how to do this. We're just gonna... It's okay, it's okay. We got the fans, we got the rad, the... Oh, such a chunky boy. I did not realize how chunky this thing is gonna be, but that means that you're gonna have a lot of fun with that screen. 
wear safety warranty information. Wow, why? 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 Why, Corsair? Why? Now that I have some semblance of idea, I know that this actually handily dandily works with the AMD backplate that is standard. So that's actually kind of nice now that we have figured it out. So the AMD AM4, this is going to be our bracket. These are our standoffs, so I can actually take these off, which these are the standard clips. Oh, that's stiff. For uh, AMD's coolers, which do any AMD, do, do any of the current, what is it, Ryzen 3rd Gen, 3rd Gen Plus, do any of the 5000 series Ryzen uh, processors come with a cooler anymore? I know the 7 and the 9 don't, I'm not sure about the 5, because obviously AMD was kind of known when we were in the 3000 series of Ryzen, the 5 and the 7 were considered such good value because even the coolers, and I think the cooler that came with the 9, the I can't remember which one is the Prism and which one is the Wraith. Uh, essentially, one of them is a little bigger and has RGB. I will save these for another day. And then we go ahead and put these in. But we are finally rocking along. Now, obviously, I have discovered the first major flaw with this book in that so far it is pretty straightforward. But obvi and obviously they can't equate for the differences between manufacturers. This is more, this is specifically geared to the NZXT, um, the single 120 millimeter AIO. Whereas I am not using that. Oh, yeah, see that one was loose. And we don't want these to be loose. So we got our standoffs installed. Yay, I still have a bunch of stuff <laughs> that I am not familiar with. I'm going to take this out. Unfortunately, this is where things get a little ticky tack because I have to take this plastic cover off to remove the Intel bracket, which means I'm exposing the well-applied thermal paste. They both say the same thing. To be fair, it looks to be exactly the same. So that is nice and snug in there, but I can't, I, can I actually? It won't technically fit on, but it's technically covering. So lay this out, and I'm just going to put this to the side very carefully. We did what we needed to do for now. Obviously those need to be set aside for later. Installing an air cooler, which we don't have. Moving the build into the, oh boy. Okay, here we go. Moving the build into the PC. I'm a little scared, but I'm sure it'll be all right. So that's a moment where you realize, oh wait, I was recording this. Maybe I should record the whole thing, but I took off this the, the main side panel and I took off the front and and top panels because they pop out easy. We have two captive screws for both sides. Come on. Gently place aside the tempered panels. Now this I think is a really cool case. When I first looked at it, it just captivated me. Uh, it seems incredibly clean and user friendly if you have a larger table. But here we have inside some space to work around with, and a part I don't know if I'm going to put in, which is essentially the front, because the, I will show you, I'm speaking, and I can show you, but I'm going to have to take out the higher drive slides, because uh, I would like to have an easier time working with this right here, or we can have this little shelf. 
So I'm just taking this out because honestly, I'm not gonna be using it currently. Actually, I'm, I'm never gonna be using this because there are plenty of spots for 2.5 inch SSDs. Release the box. Okay, Corsair, we really gotta have a talk. What the hell, man? Never mind, I'm just an idiot who uh, quite clearly does not know what he's doing. Ah. Oh, nice. Cable stays. Oh, wow. A whole, whole mess of cable stays. Which, uh, look these plastic, man. It's a little... Chonky plastic is kind of, these are some beefy cable stays and a bunch of screws. So this is where the fun begins, again, of being completely in uncharted territory. Washers, other screws, standoffs, beefy screws. So this is where I do my due diligence, somewhere around here, oh, here it is, and uh, read up a little bit on the IQ 5000X RGB. It is time to really get rocking, I guess. And then, whoop, put in our motherboard. And it looks like all the standoffs are there that we will need. Oh, I feel weird about just handling this in general as like oh really expensive very sensitive technology there we go so it is on the center notch and luckily this case the standoffs for this standard full-size uh, atx board are there so that is very good motherboard h510 nope is there the H510? What? Audio splitter! That's somewhere. All about the IO shield. This has a built in IO shield. Find the 632 screw baggie. Now, Corsair uh, doesn't label it, but looking at their their manual it does clearly delineate that these chunkier flat boys are for fans and then we have some ssd screws and these should be consulting my manual man the motherboard and hard drive screws are the ones with the rounded heads the medium-ish well technically for the screws here the large ones so we're gonna need nine of these bad boys i'm just gonna One stayed in the bag. Let's do it. Let's do the thing and put this bad boy in here. Alrighty, so let's do this. I I I don't know about the safety of using a You know what? I have a tool for this. I literally have a tool for this. We're gonna User grabby duty, and we're just gonna stick, give it a little turn. Oh, oh, grabby, du grabby duty did his job to get the screw in where it needs to be. I don't know the the safety. Wow. Let's try. Oh wait, I have multiple heads. I haven't been using them. That sounds weird you know what i mean i don't know the safety of using a magnetized screwdriver on something like this so forgive me if that's something you absolutely can and should do but uh as i said i am obviously very new at this and just a little nervous 
about all of this as my hand begins to shake as I try to screw in this bad boy. But I am, uh, I'm having a good old time other than the stomach ache. Uh, if anybody, oh, no, he went sideways. If anybody has seen uh, The Good Place, I'm feeling a bit like cheaty right now. And I'm like, I just have that nervous energy stomach ache. Because obviously this is an intense thing to do. Because I wanted to build, I didn't just want to build a PC for the sake of building a PC. I wanted to build a PC for content creation, which means in this instance... You know, having some fairly high-end and absolutely not inexpensive parts. Keyword, not inexpensive parts. Um, two more. I fucked that up just a little bit on the cross-hatching. Get that in there. Not too tight. And we'll just go back over... So starting up here, just make sure everything is nice and secure. Oh, I missed one. That's, see, this is where the inexperience really comes in. So once again, we're going to consult the manual after I put away my screws like a responsible human being. Not being, being. I am a being. Uh, so all of these will go over here in the pile of WTF. Sweet. So we the pronger. So we have a motherboard in a case. We have a motherboard with parts in it in a case. Consulting the manual, we have secured the motherboard. Relocating the fans, which I, I'm not doing because I want the three fans in the front. Uh, so this is something I don't have to do, assuming, yes, they're all, thankfully the wires are pointing the correct way. So, installing the power supply. Okay, installing the power supply. That is next. We venture deeper. I realize at this point I haven't really used this book as much as I should, and I do apologize. I'm just so full of excitement and joy. We have a modular. Oh, God. This is where I will use the book, because this, this is what I kind of fear. We. Let's go. Bring it around town. Can you see the basement? Yes, you can. Okay. So, oh, this is a chonky boy. Thousand watts of power. Important information. We got some desk cam, we got some zap straps or zip ties if you're boring. Um, I'm just going to set this gently on the tempered glass. I guess I could put these in now. I have a big old bag of cables. I've got some screws. And then I obviously have these. So the mystical magical question is how is this all going to work out? And the God's honest truth is I don't know. Because um, I am a complete and utter novice. But there we go. This is a thousand watt power supply. What was that? Something just went flip. But I don't know. Well, oh, the, uh, th this fell. Sorry for the distraction. Honestly, I'm surprised the cats haven't been louder. Well, one cat in particular. Silent operation at low to moderate loads. This fan will not spin. Okay, cool. You can go away. Obviously, I know the fan is going to be mounted down. Um, the question is, okay. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. And I mean, it is a Corsair case with a Corsair power supply, so they kind of go together rather 
well, but I'm guessing I want to plug things into this. Oh boy, okay, let's just, we're gonna take a pause for the cause. So we gotta open up this box and figure out what is what. CPU. This is the only one that's kind of easy to figure out. CPU, PCIe, Type 4, PCIe, what am I doing? A quick Googling in Reddit pointed out something very simple to notice, and that is that this will not even go into this because, let's see if I can focus. The shape right here, this little teeny notch, keeps it from going in. So that kind of dictates the way it goes in. Now, this is where things get complicated. I don't know how many of these I actually need for this PC, but I do know for my graphics card, I need three of them. So I'm actually going to plug in all four of the PCIe cables so this and this are going to go to my GPU and then I will plug this in just in case I need it and then the big bad daddy So 16 by 8 side is what is going in for the PSU. So, oh, geez, that is a, that's a real chonker. Oh boy, okay, so try to keep it neat and clean, but clips go the other way. Oh, Corsair, you make both of these products. Why, why is it backwards? Why do these cables have to cross over to be properly plugged in? We have successfully made spaghetti. Plug in CPU cable. If you're using a modular PSU, plug in the 8 and CPU. Power supply mark CPU or 8 pin CPU. Now, on this, the PCIe and the CPUs are the same, or at least it claims to be the same and actually ugh, this is going to get a little crowded and I actually kind of want to keep things a little more oh Jesus oh sweet buttery Jesus a little more organized so pop that in there and then the CPU I'm going to assume the type that says CPU because these are all the same Apparently. Oh, wait, no. So, this should fit in this way. I would assume Corsair should know what they're doing, and the cable comb is at the end that it needs to be. But there we go. So, the 24 pin, the CPU, and I already ran the ones for my graphics cards. Now, of course, this might be a huge mistake because I have no idea what other power I need. And I realize right now that the answer is in front of me. Potentially, and that is, what does this boy create, uh, need? Oh, so, this is, uh, L-shaped, so that's like that. So if I have to do SATA, uh, I am prepared. Hopefully that won't be as hard to add in, but I think we are prepared. Oh boy. Okay, so you can see as manuals continue to fall inside of the case and what we're working with. So we want the fan down and oh God. I don't know how all of this is supposed to neatly fit in here. But I do know I want to have a decently ow, cable managed computer. Okay, so the fan is face down, and then 
Oh, we're gonna have a good old time, aren't we? Now, I feel like I am missing something, and that is how the hell I see. Okay, so it's not the cleanest, but it will have to do. This over here. And then it's time to install this chonker. Get down on it. So in this case, um, there are multiple like points for screwing in your PSU. So it's obviously made to, to allow outside PSUs. And it's obviously made because I thought these holes would line up a bit better considering it's a Corsair power supply, but they don't. Case in point. Try and This is actually not a perfect fit, despite it being a Corsair case. It's not an exact science, but there we go. The fan side is down, right? I did that correctly. Yes, the fan is down. Now, cable management. Oh boy. As you can see, this is this is honestly, this is where I am a bit scared, to be completely honest. This is uh this is where things get kind of intense and can also get very, very messy. So couple couple issues. Number one, this is not the case that is in this book. So that's a big one right there. Number two, I can I can understand these. What's challenging to me is when you get into the the this case. So we're gonna have to just roll through this. Where to plug in the cables? Check your motherboard manual, which I will do. So this wants me to start with the CPU cable. So I am going to try and follow this guide and see if it does work. So I want to call, oh God. Yup, that's gonna be an issue because I do have a radiator and fans going in. So can I, am I gonna have the space to come over the top like that? We'll see, but let's get our 24 pin and then CPU. <coughs> Excuse me. So, oh, okay, 24 pin, we're going to, oh. route through there, everything is fine. Top. 
Now, oh, I should theoretically be able to fit the radiator in here. I mean, I have to imagine this was designed with coming over this way in mind. This stupid door is starting to drive me crazy though. So we got the CPU cable. We're just going to... Okay. CPU cable is in. And then we bring through this boy. Now the reason I'm doing it this way is, is I actually plan on coming over the top, at least with one or two of the PCIe cables for the graphics card, because it's such a big beefy graphics card. If I run the cables over top here, it'll actually be kind of holding it up, whereas if I run the cables down low, just increase this chance of graphic card sag. So even though I'm a complete noob, I have learned some little tricks from the internet. Now, what's next? HD audio, oh God, we are getting deep in the weeds here. And this is actually, I will say, I will call out Bitwit on this. And I know I'm nobody on YouTube compared to him, and I'm not really a tech YouTuber, but he kind of really glossed over all of the cable setup and management in his build kit video despite at the beginning saying he was going to follow the guide step by step as if he were a novice and then he just kind of breezed through uh plugging everything in as the book dictates oh my god <sighs> oh my god it's a beefy boy it's the beefiest of boys oh at this point i'm kind of inclined to bring in a chair but, you know, who needs to not have back pain, am I right? So, align the plug hole on the wire with the missing pin on the board. Run the HD audio cable to the... Cable found in back of case. That's, okay, so we, okay, I got it, I got it. Ha <laughs> ha ha, ha ha, ha 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 This is a problem, I have all of these cables, which are currently cable managed, and I actually don't want that, because I need them free and clear, but I will. Bury, bury this boy in the basement. For now, just stick that in there for now. Okay, so we have a bunch of a bunch of crap, bunch of crap. That is a thingy, and another thingy, and a bunch of thingies. So this is wanting me to start with the audio. This doesn't say HD; it just says audio, and then okay. Now I know most uh, build videos on YouTube, at least the big tech YouTubers I watch, they're always standing, but uh, despite being at the highest setting when I built this desk, uh, my back is a little sore. So I figure I would pull up my trusty Secret Labs Titan and go from there. So we are doing HD audio. I assume all of these cables at some point have to come through somewhere here okay ah i see see this is better hello so we got our cables here which i'm currently holding and uh, i guess we should go one at a time let me pull these out shoved in the basement like an idiot HD audio. 
Okay, so just reading the motherboard manufacturer's manual does help a lot. Let me see that this, in fact, even though it doesn't say anything about audio on the board, you can see the missing pin there, is right here. Carefully line it up and doesn't really click but there we go so that's the audio now according to the nzxt guide next is the f panel align align the plugged hole on the wire with the missing pin on the board run the front panel header to the do 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 or a bunch of do 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 do's now asus has this handy little doodad to assist with that so yeah let's get into it so after consulting the manual and putting this all together, I believe I found what I needed. So I put in this, uh, there is no uh, hard disk drive LED on this case, so that's blank, but you have this handy dandy little setup to kind of make it a little easier to get all of that on there. So that is now, front panel should be, well, part of it, not obviously not the, uh, would you just... Why? Why are you like this? Did I screw that up? Yes, I did. Okay. There we go. That's what I need to do. I just need to get it in the right direction. Because obviously I do, again, want to cable manage to some extent. I am going to hide some crud in the basement, as it were. But, you know. Um doing my best this i believe it says it can only go in one way i believe it goes here yep so that's plugged in and then the usb 2.0 connector is kind of vague so I'm pretty sure that's what these bad boys are, but I'm not 100%. Hey, that tilting you. Okay, consulting the guide. I think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> that is a joke. So this is just a fan doodad. She's just going to connect right here. Maybe this isn't a van doodad, or is it upside down? Okay, I honestly don't know what this is then. Oh, no, it just needs to line up properly. There we go. Okay, so as far as I know, that is everything. I'm gonna turn this whole baby around. Oh, no, we still got more work to do. Oh, I still need to. Oh. That's why that was easy. We're just, we're gonna fix that in a second, and then I gotta work on that. Mostly gotten most of the cable management. I ran my three, which these are a little snugger. I'll have to tug them out a little bit. So I've done an amount of cable management. Uh, I finished plugging in what I need to plug in, including the SATA power for the, the two SATA ports, plug plugins for the case. I ran the three eight pins PCIe's I'm going to need for splitter to make life a little easier and uh for the graphics card and now we are on to the aio which now uh, whoo i'm not scared you're scared we got the right bracket on this wants me to secure the water block first but every video i've ever seen of people doing this they always go for 
installing the fans on the radiator. And I feel like that is the direction I should go in. So we have three fans. They're going to be pushing. Yes. Yes. Because I do know that you want to orient the wires in a, in a smart way. So here are these fans. Uh, and uh, this is a step where I'm going to obviously do my due diligence. And while this wants me to secure the water block and then do the fans, I'm going to do it. I'm going to put the fans on the radiator and get this prepared first. And oh my god, I hate when twist eyes do the thing where they like double twist back on themselves. Who doesn't hate that? So what happens when a boot noob does something knowing that you can pierce this radiator. So I just wanted to read exactly what goes where. We got these generally sorted out. So these short screws and the washers are going to mount the radiator up here. Long screws for the fans. And I feel like, yeah, it's a, it's, well, yeah, straight forward ish. Load her up, Jeremy. So that should be how it goes. Wow, they really give you a lot of screws, but there we go. Fans are mounted. These back in the baggie. Uh, so now we use the L and M to mount the. Whew, why did I do that? To mount the radiator but actually i am going to jump ahead and because it has thermal paste and i don't want it dangling around i might as well install the pump unit okay so always use all resources and corsair themselves have a video on this showing directly that this little three socket plug goes onto the four pin header and this one has one specific for AIO pump. As I mute my laptop so it doesn't go off in the background because it keeps wanting me to update windows. Stop with the barrages. Okay, so thanks to Corsair's own video, this little three pump, this, this little thingy, even though it's only got three sockets, goes on to the four pins so we're going to try and I want to try and get this on first okay and then we want to just tighten this bad boy down I apologize you don't have the best angle there actually let's see yeah you have no angle but essentially going from four corner not going crazy 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 tight You can kind of feel it. And then the last one. And our pump LCD screen doodad is on. So now we'll bring you around. Uh, let's give you a close up view, maybe. We'll see. Okay, let's. Oh, I just this turn around. Uh, you always want to have plenty of light when you're working. Okay, so now comes the hard part, which is might change the view you have. No, nope, that, that kind of works. <sighs> Smooth sailing or since this is a, an AIO, cool running.
Okay. That was fun. Now I'm starting to wonder, could I... Oh my god, I could, couldn't I? If I ever wanted to upgrade to a push-pull, I don't... I can put the fans on the outside. Because it has the holes right here for the cables. So that's actually good to know. Because I was thinking about doing, like, maybe push-pull. But I... I didn't, ultimately. Obviously. And then, yeah, there we go. Okay, it's time to go in and connect this to, according to uh, Asus's thingy, plug it in. Okay, how does this go? <laughs> so this is supposed to go on the last one. I can get it to plug in. Oh, there we go. Had it upside down. Oh, let me see if I can kind of tuck this, actually. Because it's just like, I know it's a little black wire. You don't really see much of it, but. Kind of try and get it out of the way. Oh, yeah. That's always fun. So that's connected, and then these are gonna maybe come over this or under this, I haven't decided yet. But we got that installed, so I can throw this magnetic dust filter back on, and it's back to the book. That's actually not true, I just realized. That's not everything I have to do. I actually have to plug in the rest of it. So we are going to do that, and unfortunately the book can't help us. I'm once again going to have to return to the handy dandy YouTube video. If you happen to buy this particular cooler, I don't know about other coolers from Corsair. But this particular one, they have a lovely woo, YouTube video basically showing you what to do, as well as their manual for this can be found online, not in the box. But hey, you know, save, save paper. I don't hate it. I just wish it was a little, a little more clear, but I will be back in a flash to figure out the rest of this lovely, lovely mess and how this all works. Okay, so these seems pretty straightforward. Where is that Y splitter that I put over here so long ago? So the Y splitter. So, right, so this goes into the, the Y splitter as well as this. And this just plugs into a single USB header on my motherboard, which is kind of, kind of awesome. Technology nowadays. Oh, that's backwards. Don't want to bend any pins. Make sure to click. And then where, where are you? Oh, here, all the way up here. Fold it up. Okay. I will be using this area, possibly, to hide things. Although maybe, you know, because the cable channel is getting a little bulky, but that's because the three PCIe's. Does this, oh, oh, I see this side up. That's, that actually is a godsend. Good job, Corsair, giving me um, a clear little stripey line. So that is done. And then does it tell me which side? RGB hub fans. So I'm guessing the ones that say two RGB hub go to the RGB hub. So we got four of these, which I kind of want to bundle right here. And I'm going to do, yeah, so let me get that in line first. Come here, come here. 
and said, even though I'm a bit of a scrub and this is my first rodeo, I know that cable management can be very important, especially considering, again, it's my first PC build. So if something goes wrong, I don't want to have a complete and utter rat's nest of cables. I want to have at least some semblance of neatness so I can ease it more easily go through them. I don't know where I'm going to put this though. This is the only thing I don't like is that there's there's no screw, there's no there's no nothing to mount this. As far as I can tell, it doesn't fit anywhere. There's no there's no nothing. It's just going to have to be essentially buried in the in the basement. So with that in mind actually, oh shite. Okay, we want, let's get some boys. Those go, nope, those don't want to go that way. Okay, so what did I need to do? Oh, wait, nothing, no, yeah. So we want SATA power, right there. So I'm gonna have to, yep, this is just going to be a mess, but first, oh, it's hard to figure out an order of operation sometimes when you're dealing with such a, a kind of mess. Oh. Okay. You're too far, you're too far, you're too far. Through. Oh, no. This actually needs to go. This way. As I'm trying desperately, oh my god, to get this in the right. Oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. I will probably have edited and chopped up what you just kind of didn't mostly see. But that is done. And then this is going to connect to this SATA right here. Make sure the L is lined up. Enough. So SATA power is connected. Again, I'm just gonna try and tuck this in the basement for the most part. Okay, we want, come on, yellow, yellow, yellow. We try again for some semblance of cable management. So RGB hub. So we'll just pop these bad boys in, I guess. Yeah. See, this is easy. He says, full well knowing, it's probably not gonna stay that way. How the bug ruckers? Oh, like that, okay. Fans, fan one, fan two. These just don't seem as secure as they should. Some of this feels jankier than I thought it would be in terms of like, wow, this seems way flimsy. How does anybody ever build a PC? <laughs> okay, do 
I have enough slack to bury this in the basement? I should. The problem is the the problem is that there we go. I just need to slide. And we're going to yeah, yeah, I can tie them down here for one. So again, wanna keep things neat and tidy as much as possible. What was like what was like? What was like? What is it good for? What was life like before tie down? Like built in cable channels and whatnot. I have to wonder. Oh, that's snug as a bog in a rug. Now, unless I'm completely crazy, I think. I think we're almost done. That, uh, I know that's a little jank. I know, I know. But, unless there's some secret way to mount it, um, I don't know what else to do with it. So, I also realized, like, I, I am sorry, NZXD, I've kind of not followed this, but to be fair, actually, I think this is a fair test, because a lot of this just doesn't entirely work for any parts. Now, granted, this might work great if I had simpler parts. I'm the person who wanted like a 360 AIO that had an LCD panel. I wanted like this thing and that thing. So this is for an air cooler. Installing the, don't have a Wi-Fi card. Because as far as I can tell, there's this, the GPU, the heart of this bad boy. Closing it up, okay. Okay. So yeah, I'm not crazy. The GPU is going to be the final thing. Because <laughs> this door is not entirely 100% flush. But then again, I feel like, I, I want to say, I feel like I've done pretty good for a first time builder. Obviously I've watched a ton of videos on YouTube, but even still, I feel Alrighty, it's time. Folks, it is time. This is, this is what it's all about right here. Oh, is that a, yeah. Thanks, Max. Oh, oh, I didn't see the other one because of the green color. Oh, this is, uh, this was the first part I got because I, I've been wanting to build a PC for a while and I kept going back and forth and I almost considered even resorting to StockX because out of all the scalper places, they have better prices, even though they don't know the first thing about actually making sure the GPU is legit and new. Uh, but yeah, thanks to Matt Swider on, uh, Twitter. I was able to catch one of the Best Buy drops and got this for near MSRP. Of course, this card MSRP from EVGA Direct is, I think, $1430 or $1440. Best Buy was $1480. But, you know, that's a very small markup considering, like, the next best price is going to be a scalper for somewhere in the $2000 range. Oh. Oh. This is a meaty, meaty boy. Minimum system requirements. Each VGA, each VGA requires a power supply that meets or exceeds minimum wattage in the PC. So I should set the retail box for this product. So retail box for this product. So 
somewhere on here that it's supposed to tell me. But it doesn't seem to. So it's always important. Option option four. So option one is a six and an eight. Option two is eight and eight. Option option two. option three is an eight, and option four is eight eight and eight. So I need to figure out which one of these guys are married before I move any further. Sorry to delay the gratification, folks. <laughs> Oh god. See, this is why you don't manage your cables all tightly right away. Because you never know when you need to know which one is the split one. Which I also have no way of really figuring out from here, to be honest. Which has got to be an easy way to do this, but I don't think there is. So we're just going to have to go into the muck. Can you see the muck? Mostly. Okay. Okay. Um, we have, so the, so four, four, so these all Oh my god. Oh god. Mistakes were made just a little bit. This one is big. Wait. Well, I just realized. Oh yeah. I'm not using one of these. So I need to see if I can remove it. Because I'm not using it, and it takes up space. So, here we go. This is what Daddy needs to do. <laughs> Just follow this line. This one. Okay. I have identified, and for now, I'm, I'm going to take the manage at the end. But I have identified the two. So, right here you see option four sure you see that so the two banger goes in first and then that the following equipment uh, installation guide I love that the following equipment is included in the EVGA GeForce graphics card box installation guide guide the installation guia de installation das folgen zur at nah no oh Okay, so what is the Oh! This card includes a retention bracket for attaching to some chassis. So I will keep that as well as a little... The badges. The badges and the stickers. I'm sorry, but you know, when you buy a case like this, you want it to be clean. Oh my god. Holy... Wow. Wow. Like, wow. This is, this is beyond beef. Jesus Christ. Wow. You know, I've seen these cards online, but until you get one in your hands, like this thing is like, look at, look at my head and I don't have the smallest head and look at this thing. Holy shit. That is a, Beefy, beefy, beefy card. Okay. So, and I'm trying to figure out which way the plugs, because there it looks like there's a, a more of a gap here than here. So, we'll we'll figure it out. First things first is it's going to slot in there, which means. Two. Gingerly 
put it down so that's going to be these two right here that go yep comes off like that it's totally how it's like here so i'll actually keep those in here because obviously you want to keep all your boxes at least within reason. You don't need to keep every box. I feel like I don't need to keep... Well, actually, I do need to keep the power supply box because it has the original cables in it. You don't have to keep every single box. Like, for the for the SSDs, the RAM, you don't have to keep those boxes. But for something like the graphics card, especially, like, a graphics card like this, you are going to want to keep your boxes. So... This does appear to be the two and one. So I am going to go with the two and one. And then I'm going to check right here. So, because even though I haven't used this guide as much, it's mostly because a lot of these parts just are a bit more involved than, than this guide was, was initially made for. It's a, it's a good guide. And they do say in the guide, read the manuals for the products that you have it's just some of them like the the aio didn't actually come with a manual i have to go online to course here to get it anyway so remove the expansion slots i got the screws right here for safety and i never put the motherboard screws back which is a shame on me. also no cap why why so many like i mean Theoretically, sure, I guess if I, like, I can't imagine even like a Threadripper, like a EATX board is going to take this many screws. I guess it's in case you lose some, but then again, if you're, if you've, uh, if you've lost screws in your case, that's bad. That's very bad. Okay. Remove the pin cover. Open the, I'm going to open it first. It's open. And actually, I'm going to peel this off because this graphics card is going to get in the way, so we're we're getting some of the peel. May as well peel everything because I'm close to done. At least I hope either that or I'm in for a very long and depressing night. If this doesn't come together. So I may as well peel these off. Okay, that's all the peeling. Whew. Actually, I want to peel what I can't reach. Not gonna do a full peel, but you know, obviously you wanna get make sure the back is clear. And you definitely wanna peel this off, because this boy is going to get hot. I mean, you know, I I am currently I may as well peel it all the way. I'm currently in Florida and I guarantee you this thing gets way way hotter than anything we have around here. Is this peelable or is that just scratched to shit? Oh my God. Why is there no tab for this? EVGA, why? No pull tab for this peel, and that's disappointing, but there we got it eventually with a bit of a bit of a smudge. But okay. This honker is ready to go in. Take off this and I'm gonna serve that as well. Actually, I need to move all this. Yeah, I'm putting it really fast at least here. Get that out of the way. Because I'm keeping the bag as well. Okay, let's get down. Oh my god. I swear to God, this USB 3. Stay in place. Okay. So. Oh, the PCU, just like, insert the GPU. Oh, I'd hope I took the cover off for that as well. Fine click. 
Yep. Most technique always works. Going through this build, I'm like, maybe I got too big a case. Maybe this was a little bit overkill. Now that I have the graphics card in, I'm like, this case is kind of small. Like, obviously, there's still a ton of space in there, which you kind of want for airflow. Uh, I would rather have too much space than too little, although I guess too much space, the air could get lost on the way to the important parts. I don't know. Uh, ask Gamers Nexus. That would be a study for them. Is there such a thing as too big a case? I don't like it. Get more. On point. Okay. Okay. Our graphics card is, is in. The boy is in. And this talks about bringing down a metal plate. There's no metal plate on this particular case. And then plugging it in. So according to this, I just want to consult it one more time to make sure I'm not crazy. Option four is is a two and a four. And it also says information that EVGA supports specs. So I actually am going to just double check that because obviously I want to make sure this thing is getting enough power and getting the correct power. So I will be back. Okay, and now it's time to finish it. Ooh. Yeah, that'll work. Ooh, boy. Oh, shit. Did I not leave myself enough slack? Oh, I did. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. One day I hope to be able to upgrade to like cost like completely custom sleeved um, from cable mod, but uh, obviously you know like that I, you can probably total up everything in this build and understand why I didn't splurge for that just yet. I mean the graphics card alone, while deserving of some beautifully custom sleeve cables is a uh, you know quite pricey oh. trying to adjust the cone ah uh, yeah okay so we have again yeah I would like some custom sleeve cables but so far <laughs> <laughs> So the guide, again, uh, is, uh, the guide does say to consult the manuals for the individual parts. It's a really cool booklet, but it isn't what I would call optimal. Would I say it's worth buying this booklet to help you build a PC? Uh, that's not just an NZXT build kit. Honestly, I, I would not. There are uh, enough videos on YouTube. There are enough resources. Yeah, that would be my suggestion. Plug in the power cable, plug in the display cable. But um, as far as I can tell, that's everything. That's the whole shebang. So I'm going to do a partial cleanup. 
I'm not putting the sides, obviously I'm not putting anything on uh, until I post. So I'm gonna do a partial cleanup, plug it in, and fingers <laughs> crossed. This is the terrifying part. It would appear I owe, or owe Corsair an apology. Vast, where the hell does it go? And I thought I was ready to take the giant leap for life. <sighs> nope, I can't, I can't sing. I mean, I, I could, it's not like I can monetize this video anyway because I'm a small channel, but I'm pro I, I don't want to get sued by whoever owns the Beatles catalog, so. So I apologize, Corsair, for calling you out. I didn't realize you actually did put 3M tape in there. Of course, I will call it out a little because it's hot. Like, unfortunately, cable management just took a little bit of a hit because of where it lines up. But uh, it isn't the prettiest. Actually, hold on. Let me. See what I can do here. Of course, it helps up there. There we go. Okay, so we want to try and tidy this up a bit, but one of these is longer than the other. There will always be time to tidy later. The moment of truth and deep, 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 deep fear and terror is upon us. Moment of truth. Oh God. We have lights. It lights up. It's going through a bunch of codes rapidly. It's good, yeah. No. <laughs> Unless it's just figuring stuff out. Of course, the monitor keeps turning off, which is a problem. On, I want you on. <sighs> we have power for sure. We detected a new processor which will change the data structure of the storage space for firmware TPM. If you do not apply a TPM function, please press Y to continue. Otherwise, if you did not apply TPM function, why? Uh, I did, did, did not. I don't know. So the code light keeps signaling on the motherboard different things. I don't know if it's just going through like a warm up because obviously it's, it's brand new. I mean, all the RGB is on, all the fans are spinning properly. New CPU installed. It, 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 I believe we have posted. Please enter setup to configure your system. CPU fan error. Okay. So that might be one of the codes that's coming up, but all the fans are spinning. And obviously you can see the processors at a very chilly 26 degrees centigrade. So I might have plugged in something in the wrong header or yeah, to be fair, because I used the controller command core thing from this, maybe that's why, because it all boils down to a single USB and the motherboard is like, where there, there's no fans. And it's like, it's because they're not plugged in. They're actually, no, not a single fan is plugged directly into the header. So I'm going to assume that's it. Obviously I will look up the code. But it is giving me a green-ish light, which usually, you know, I figure if it was red, that would be bad. <laughs> green means go. Press F1 to run setup. 
I'm holy, holy crap. Holy crap. Yay. Yay. Big yay. Yay. I'm so proud of you, baby. I'm so proud of you. You are adorable. <laughs> so there you go. It turns out, yeah, you, you can build a PC. I, yeah, you can build a PC. Now, I did watch hours upon hours of like tech YouTubers over the years. But it's, it's a bit difficult. You have to read the manuals because, you know, not everything is universal. But I posted on the first try. <laughs> So I'm I'm considering this a win, even though there are error codes going off. They're probably minor error codes because technically everything is all unicorn vomit. Uh, so I have been Molly Mock J, and that's going to wrap up filming for tonight. But I will either make a second video after this one or an addendum and just make this video a little longer once I get through the configuration, get Windows installed, and all that. But uh, yeah. Enjoy some tasty B-roll, because I'm going to do what anybody does, put the glass back on and the sweet, sweet peel. That'll be fun. Took me a minute, but I finally got it to read the damn USB, and away we go. Oh, happy day, indeed. So as you can see, got both monitors set up. Windows is on here. I started with the BIOS actually, so I updated the BIOS first, installed Windows, did all the updates on there, did the update uh, on the NVIDIA drivers, and now I'm basically ready to rock and roll, downloading Steam, downloading uh, Premiere, Audacity, just... Uh, Basically getting everything on here, OBS. There's a lot, obviously a lot of software I gotta load up on this thing. But it booted, it posted first time. I was able to install everything. For my first PC build, I am very happy. It went mostly smoothly. Cable management was a bit finicky, but I feel like that's to be expected, especially with a complete noob. But yeah, my PC is ready, and now I'm ready to conquer eventually, one day, maybe, perhaps. Of course, starting with, of course, I have to download Premiere and whatnot to make the video that you are currently watching. And if you are still watching, oh my god, I love you. Thank you for the support and sticking through it to the very end. But yeah, a successful PC build. One more thing, last note, I'm sure there will be various questions, comments in the comments section, which I encourage, but I did want to note, after I did all the updates, I did go back into the BIOS and enable DOC something, I can't remember the acronym, it's like XMP, but on AMD platforms, but the RAM is running at 3600 at the correct timing, so I, I did make sure to set that up, so I'm getting the most out of my RAM for the Ryzen 9 processor, and now I'm off to probably install a couple things and then go to bed, because it's not incredibly late. I am a night owl, but it is 1.40 a.m., and it has, uh, it has been quite the evening, but I am super stoked. First build in the book, in the books. And uh, considering a 3080 Ti and a Ryzen 9 and everything, I don't anticipate building another PC anytime soon. I'm not really going for like a tech channel per se, but I'm sure down the line there may be other builds. Uh, 
if I'm fortunate enough and my partner is interested, maybe I could build her PC. That would be that would be fun. Or we could build it together, because now I am actually experienced. But as I have said, I'm Molly Mock J. I'll catch you on the flip side. Or the spin side. I'm about to yep, yep, yep. Too close. I'm too close to the desk. I can't rotate all the way. Let's go back. 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 Later.